Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Wednesday, the 7th of August. All right, now, as we just enter into the uh, Asian session, let's have a look what the next 24 hours have got for us. Okay, so the now, let me just sort of give you a bit of an update too. I've been getting a lot of messages from traders, very confused with what's going on. Now, this is, we are in sort of pre, unprecedented um, uh, area as such with Trump. Right, well, since Trump's been in play, the overall analysis here that you can see each day, I can't remember the, the latest or the last time I've had to update this so much every day. And what I'm talking about is we're talking about the, the overall, like there's daily trends. They shouldn't really change every day, right? And we've got the weekly ones. But what we're seeing is, is, is some large sporadic moves which are pushing through daily trend lines. It's because they've been trading sideways for some time, the, they're banging through daily trend lines. Of course, the noise in the hourly charts, you do expect some sort of activity there, but this is also changing almost intraday, right? So it's what we've got is we've got conflicting um, signals from where, where activity is coming from, from trading, right? So like the, today's market conditions, let me just wind it back. We've got normal liquidity, but we're going to wait and see what's going on to really work out where the best opportunities are. And that's because the core market drivers, the Sino-US trade issue, obviously a major issue, and Brexit as well. Now, just on that, I think we're just about to go through, we're, we're in phase two of the way Trump does things, right? He's come out, lambasted uh, China, so we're going to add all these tariffs. Now he's almost backpedaling, right? And let me just change the colour of that pen. Uh, what I'm seeing is Trump dismisses fears of long-lasting trade war. This is him backing down from his crazy uh, shock and awe tactics, which, which he's done since he's been in office. You know, he comes out, threatens Mexico with massive war, and you're going to pay for it and all this sort of stuff. Threatens China with, if you don't do a deal, we're going to just smash you anyway. And then starts to back backtrack. Right? China says, you know, we're to, there's going to be severe global impact. And Trump's going, no, 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 there's no, not going to be a big deal and all this stuff. So to me, I would be starting to look for, to get short, dollar, dollar China. I mean, it went up 15 cents, I think it was, uh, recently. So if, he, if Trump does back down like he looks like he's doing at the moment, then we are going to see a bit of a turnaround in some of these recent moves. And this is one of the reasons why the analysis is moving around so much. Right. So what can you do? What can you focus on here? Like this top part of the chart here is a little bit wonky donkey. Dollar CAD. Now you can actually look at the currency pairs that have actual factual evidence of what's going on. Dollar CAD, oil is just dropped to 53 bucks and I'll show you the charts in a minute. That's going to put upward pressure on Dollar CAD, right? Right. Excuse me. Um, the safe haven trades. Well, you know what? I'm just taking those out of play at the moment because they are getting a little bit loose um dollar yen is now trading sideways and dollar swiss well it's lost all sort of shape as well so that safe haven trade doesn't look like it's a clear trading opportunity to me at the moment uh euro well the fundamentals are down it's going up on the hourlies and you know what daily and weekly charts it's back trading sideways so that's lost its mojo as well um sterling we've got brexit banging away on this puppy long term it's going down and the Bank of England is concerned about everything else, plus Brexit, global growth and all that sort of stuff. But it's pretty hard to call with Brexit hanging over it. Now, the one sort of, well, the couple of clear opportunities to me comes into the Aussie, right? So the central bank, they're looking at the economic numbers, inflation, uh, the overall general numbers and employment numbers to see what's going on. But the Aussie is the bigger, the biggest um, sort of side impact from the US China trade issue. And that's why it's going down. Now the Kiwi probably isn't, I mean, they are tied into China almost as much as Australia, but the picture is a little bit different. We had a really strong employment numbers yesterday. That sort of put the hourly chart into a bit of a sideways motion. Overall, it is trading down and the sentiment from the central bank is down. Now we do have the RBA, RBNZ interest rate decision in about an hour and 40 minutes. They are expected to cut rates. That's what's expected in the market, right? So don't just go and empty your account and get short uh, Kiwi if they do cut rates because it is expected. What will be important is their press conference. Now, I expect them to probably maybe potentially cut rates, be a little bit neutral in the statement and in the press conference come out and say, well, you know, 
all this crazy stuff about China and global growth, that's something we've got to watch very carefully, blah, blah, blah. It's a big negative uh, possibility, right? And that's what we've really got to sort of focus on. So to me, the two bottom pairs here, uh, you know, are opportunities. Now, once again, I just showed you that news page there before and showing Trump dismisses fears of long-lasting trade war. That means he's coming back to the table to try and get something going. He's already done the shock and all tactics on, on China. I think they're used to it. They're calling his bluff. So we may see uh, if the China-US start to come back to the trade table, we may see Aussie and Kiwi start moving back to the top side, right? So that's the danger, right? It's the geopolitical event. There's no timing on it. Most of Trump's decisions, or pretty much all of them, are during the North American session, and that's where the activity starts from. So if you're in the Asian session thinking that's going to come out, uh, you probably want to think again. Now, let's just have a look at um, the charts. I just want to give you a look at these major charts. I've just refreshed my uh, trend lines, which you should be doing now. Short term on the out, these are all hourly charts. Euro is, uh, has been sort of tracing to the top side. I think this is a massive, really good clean out of stop losses on the top side. I'm still, in fact, well, I still like Euro lower. So potentially getting into uh, Euro back down below, sort of around, around 111.80 looks like a pretty good option. Here's the Aussie, just trading nicely. We've got a nice trend line there to focus on. If the US China come back um, to the trade table, buying uh, obviously above 68 would be a good idea. If there's no sort of uh, deal, well, then it's going to keep going lower. Today, the Kiwi is now sort of trading sideways. It has been, just been trending down. As I said, the employment numbers yesterday is a cat amongst the pigeons as far as the RBNZ um, rate decision goes. But you know what? Employment globally is at record lows. Everyone's trying to pay all this debt. So I don't think that's going to be come into it. I, as I said, the market is factoring in a rate cut. The next move will come from that. Probably the statement or the press conference will be the main catalyst for the move. Now, um, dollar yen, we had that sort of big sort of move down once Trump sort of got everything moving. We are now starting to trade sideways. We've got a, a short-term resistance line in the top of the cloud there. I tell you what, if there is some sort of announcement about a deal between US and China, well, not a deal, but, you know, discussions starting again, then we could see dollar yen, that safe haven trade completely unwind and a pretty good opportunity to buy some dollar yen above probably 106.30. Looks pretty good. Uh, sterling, well, it's trading sideways. Brexit, I'm sort of leaving that puppy alone. It's not really reacting to anything at the moment. Uh, and here's the other good uh, bit of tradable information. Uh, oil back to 53 bucks, 53 and a half. Dollar CAD moving to the top side with that move in oil. You've got to start looking at CAD yen. It's, uh, it's a real good play um, uh, to get into that to get into that sort of oil trade as well. Plenty of potential. All right, so that's where we are, right? So this is, as I said, just relax. If you're getting very frustrated with the current activity in the market, well, join the club because we're all extremely pissed off with what's going on. There's no consistency. The Fed gave us a, a, a great trading opportunity last week and, and Trump, funnily enough, trumped it straight away uh, within sort of six hours with all these trade tariffs and all this sort of stuff. So just be aware, follow the major themes, right? And today, the theme, it's very rare that you, you sort of sit back and go, well, what's the major theme today? Well, it's the Kiwi. And you're like, well, that's all we've got on the table. So make sure you're focusing on this. Now, one other thing, the Kiwi liquidity, even at its best, it's thin. So when there's interest rate decisions, there will be no liquidity. So don't think Placing trades either side of the market around the data, around the release is a good opportunity because you're more or less going to get hammered on the spreads anyway. And this isn't just the breakers, it's, it's what happens in the banks, right? And as I said, the main move will probably come from the statement or the press conference because that uh, rate cut is factored in. Now, for our members, don't forget, the uh, uh, later on, we do have the, um, uh, the special webinar i finished the online courses, where to now? This is going to be a great uh, catch up for all those traders that have come through the online courses. The, uh, give you a real connection with what's going on, tune you up as far as the technicals, the macroeconomic fundamentals, and really give you a good understanding of what you're actually looking at here on the MyFX Trading Hub page. So those members that are eligible for that, don't forget to, to tune in and register. And that's pretty much all we've got, guys. So unfortunately, right at this point in time, 
the overall picture here is very messy or confusing on the dollar because we don't have, we've got the Fed sentiment versus the overall Trump sentiment. Um, the other pairs, well, as I said, Aussie looks like the clearest uh, trade on the downside. And we've got the major data though coming out on the Kiwi. All right, so that's where we're at at the moment. There is opportunities, but they are very short term at the moment. All right, guys, all the very best and uh, have a good trade day. Cheerio.